the game industry can be a real bastard. Developers are expected to work long hours, they go through these crunch periods where they're working obscenely, an obscene amount of work, and they miss their families, and they get burnt out, and then when the game finally ships, the company publishing it can decide to get rid of all those hard workers in a round of layoffs. That's something we need to talk about in more detail at some point. It's part of what I call the free lunch that the game industry enjoys, one of the perks of being a bullshit company while whining to the public that you're not making enough money. Monday is always coming, so we'll be able to talk about that at some point. But first, we need to look at Telltale Games, which recently announced its bankruptcy, leaving its employees without severance after burning them out to ship basically the same game over and over again. This script, actually, well, much of this script was written in advance of the Telltale news. I was planning an episode about being burnt out myself on Telltale's games while it was burning its own developers out. And, well, obviously I didn't get a chance to post that beforehand, so we've retooled it and it will now talk about basically why I feel Telltale failed or Tell failed. Fucking prick. So here we go. Telltale Games. The Walking Dead is one of my favourite video games of all time. A masterclass in storytelling using interactive media, Telltale absolutely hit it out of the park with its original episodic foray into Robert Kirkman's zombie-flavoured world of misery and snapped heartstrings. Season 1 of Telltale's The Walking Dead was beautifully written, one of those games that actually inspire emotions such as sadness, fear, and sometimes a little bit of hope, rather than pay lip service by just saying your game is emotional without explaining how or why, as if the word emotional itself is simply enough of a descriptor. Pro tip game developers, it isn't. Anyway, alongside that, Telltale employed a cast of amazing voice actors to bring the story to life, and do so in a way that truly resonated and felt human and natural, a rarity among many high-profile games. Then there's the beautiful soundtrack and the trademark comic book visual style that's helped make Telltale's work instantly recognisable. But by the time the final season rolled around, I had absolutely zero interest in playing it. From one of my favourite video games ever, to a game I could couldn't be bothered to so much as view a trailer for. From the way Telltale ended up, it appears I wasn't the only one who got utterly fatigued. Once upon a time, Telltale's formula looked like a winner that couldn't go wrong. Take an existing IP and plug it into an adventure game structure that emphasises characterization and plot. It was a formula that allowed Telltale to successfully adapt certain intellectual property that struggled otherwise to find a decent foundation for a video game. Just look at what Activision shat out of its infected milky anus when it tried to have its own crack at the walking dead. At least with Telltale's easy plug-in method, you could have had a game that focused on the narrative and presentation rather than something that was built from the ground up by a studio that would rather be working on anything other than a shitty licensed Activision game. But that formula was a little too easy to replicate, because Replicate Telltale did. And Replicate. And Replicate and replicate. I once dreamed of all the fun IP Telltale could bring to life. Imagine a Telltale Aliens game, yahoo! But by the end of it, if you told me they were doing a Spider-Man game with Mysterio as the main villain, I don't know if I'd even care very much. And anybody who knows me can tell you how much I love Mysterio. Like, I mean romantic love with his big round shiny glistening fishbowl head. Since publishing season one of The Walking Dead, Telltale Games has been on what could only be described as a spree. From 2013 onward it put out The Walking Dead, 400 Days, The Wolf Among Us, The Walking Dead Season 2, Tales from the Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Minecraft Story Mode, The Walking Dead Mission, Batman The Telltale Series, The Walking Dead A New Frontier, Guardians of the Galaxy A Telltale Series, Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 and Batman The Enemy Within. All topped off with the final season of The Walking Dead, stop me if I've missed any out. These games had all been released with varying degrees of quality, some of them like Game of Thrones proving quite disappointing, while others Others, such as Tales from the Borderlands had been admittedly brilliant. But after so many games spread across disparate licenses all doing pretty much the same thing, what made The Walking Dead stand out just simply blinked out of existence. The luster, the sheen, it had worn off and after so many return trips to the same structure, the flaws in its limited interactivity had been felt more keenly with each release. One such example could be found in the game's choices. Telltale adventures often gave players tough decisions to make within small windows of time 
time. Who to save, what to say to a person, who to trust, etc. These notorious choices were never really more than illusions, since hardly anything you chose in the games ever directly impacted the stories. Whenever you could choose to save a character or let them die in The Walking Dead, for example, they were either people who had no impact on the story at all, or a vital character that would survive regardless of your own decision. However, because the game was so well plotted and the characterization so spot on, it didn't really matter that the choices were mostly illusions. The illusion worked, and that's all it needed to do. Even if you knew a fork in the road didn't ultimately matter because the destination wound up the same, the fork was given such gravitas it impacted your thought process regardless. But like a magician with only one trick up their sleeve, you start to see the illusion for what it is with enough exposure. And Telltale exposed itself more times than Randy Orton. Allegedly. It's not like Telltale went as overboard as Dynasty Warriors, but part of what made The Walking Dead so appealing in the first place is that it was special. Now, surrounded by so many games doing the exact same shit, it's hard to say it's exactly special anymore. Not with Telltale going back to the same well time and again. It's like with me. You meet me once, you think I'm quite interesting. You meet me a few more times and you start noticing I'm actually very boring, only know how to talk about maybe three things, and my voice grates like sandpaper on a perineum. If Telltale had done anything of note to progress its gameplay in the time since The Walking Dead, or at least up the production value, that might have helped alleviate the weariness. But it really hadn't. And lest we forget, Telltale was doing this kind of game before it struck gold in 2013 too, with titles like Jurassic Park and Back to the Future only adding to the pile and helping the studio's adventure games rival even Call of Duty in terms of trotting out the same old, same old. Hell, just like God, Telltale's games all ran off an increasingly aging engine that dated the titles with each release. Compare what Big Bad Wolf has done with its own episodic adventure game, The Council. Now, by all accounts, The Council isn't a particularly well-made game. It's a technical mess full of graphical glitches, and it features one of the least sexiest kiss scenes outside of a David Cage production. Come, Louis. <laughs> However, if you can look past the horrifying character models, the spotty narrative, and the inconsistent voice acting, you'll note that at the very least, the council has seriously worked to upgrade Telltale's gameplay style. For one thing, you have choices that actually alter the course of the story, with whole plot segments unlocked or missed due to the directions you choose to go. There are characters you can form alliances with, ones you can shun, and while you're still along a somewhat linear track, whatever smoke and mirrors there are work because the illusions are new. On top of that, you have an actual experience system that allows you to put skill points into various abilities. These abilities unlock extra dialogue choices and allow you to spot unique environmental details or solve puzzles in new ways. If you don't have the linguistic skill, for example, you won't be able to translate certain texts. If you've got the politics skill, you'll be able to understand some of the more clandestine discussions between influential figures while accessing fresh options. Backing up the skill system is a cast of hideous Toby Jug characters, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. A character vulnerable to manipulation can be lied to more easily, but if you try politics on George Washington, for example, you'll find he's immune to it and you'll fail an attempt to coerce him, earning a negative status effect in the process, not just a little thing at the top that says he'll remember it. You know, I just noticed that the last thing I said was said with a bit of a sneer. I used to love those little bits of text in the corner of a Telltale game telling you a character would remember something you'd done or said, but I guess familiarity breeds contempt because now I just roll my eyes at the idea. The illusion spell wore off. As if all the aforementioned differences weren't enough to distinguish the council and Telltale's output, in-game actions such as certain failures and successes can grant additional permanent perks for the player, including free skill points and reduced stamina cost for the use of certain abilities. The concept of skills and levelling up are of course nothing new, but it's not exactly something you see implemented in the average adventure game. Rather than simply copy Telltale's work verbatim, Big Bad Wolf put in the effort and did new things with the genre, something that Telltale itself, sadly, 
failed to do in the past five years. Telltale pumped out a lot of adventure games, biting off far more than it could chew while never evolving as a studio. With this approach came an obscene overworking of staff, staff that won't even get severance pay now that they've been booted from a bankrupt company. Telltale co-founder Kevin Bruner said he was saddened at the loss of a studio that greenlit crazy ideas that no one else would consider. But Telltale greenlit far too much, and for all its consideration of crazy ideas, it never considered the wacky plan of maybe doing something truly new. When the final season of The Walking Dead trudged out, I felt by that point Telltale's formula was no longer enough to sustain the amount of software that had been thrown out there. Indeed, it apparently wasn't enough to sustain the company at all. By the end, Telltale was said to have been a toxic place where developers were overworked and undercompensated, to the point where many talented creators burnt out and left the studio. And all that work was for nothing but a series of diminishing returns. Earlier this year, Telltale admitted it had failed customers with its old engine and a quality nosedive as a result of taking on too many projects at once. By the time the company had installed new leadership to fix things, it was too late. The damage had been done, Telltale was itself the walking dead. You see what I did there? That's how clever I am. So with a game in mid-season and yet more games planned on its once seemingly infinite docket, Telltale suddenly dropped a bombshell and said it was all over. Just like that. Hundreds of employees kicked into shit creek without a paddle, projects abandoned, and a shell of a studio that tried to do too much, while also doing so very, very little. Now of course, repetition can work just fine. The Fast Show was a very entertaining sketch show in the 90s, and Dynasty Warriors, as absurd as its saturation is, continues to be a success in its own way, and when they try and deviate from their pattern, they normally end up with a pretty bad game. I mean, we all remember Dynasty Warriors 9 and what it did to Zhang He. Then of course there's this show. I'm sure some comments before getting to this point have already been posted under the video saying, but Jim, you do the same thing all the time. And well, it still succeeds. I haven't lost money betting on this horse. And whenever I do try and deviate too much, about half the viewers bother to watch it. So I'm sort of locked in where I am. Oh well. And you know, even then, I still try and diversify and do different things, and what I do isn't predicated on surprise, it doesn't rely on looking unique and standing out, which Telltale initially did and couldn't do when it made so much of its fucking games. Like I say, they're a magician with a trick, a very good trick, but one that you can't do too often, because otherwise we all see it coming, which everybody did and reportedly fewer and fewer people became interested in their games as a result. And there we are with what we have. Telltale Games gone, the latest Walking Dead, or rather the final Walking Dead season, just abandoned, and that's that. I mean, there's another topic we could have at some point about episodic games and how this demonstrates that putting your faith into a game that's not even out yet is a mistake, or at least something that's a huge risk for the customer, it's like early access, except a bit more insidious, because you don't expect a company like Telltale to just poof, just go. It might be unsurprising in hindsight, but it was still a surprise that it happened. But anyway, they're gone. I'm still here. Thank God for me. Should be burning in 